Hey everybody, welcome to MS Plain Talk. You know, it's here on Plain Talk where we do our best to talk about multiple sclerosis and the signs and symptoms of MS in easy to understand plain English. You know, I received a very positive post on the video, I Can't Hear You, this week from a lady who... She 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 is in the beginning of her journey with MS. And in my opinion, the beginning is the scariest and the hardest part of living with MS. Because you don't know what's going on. You just don't know what's going to happen, anything. So that's where it's scary. And that's where it's very hard so i just want you to know it's going to get better but thank you for letting me know you enjoyed the video and your compliment on it on the video ending on a very positive note i am sorry that i didn't respond in the comments but for some reason for whatever reason i don't know it is not showing up on my end, so, you know, the video comments. But I did get notified that you left the comment. Wait, you mean people are actually watching these? Seriously? Hey, I'm just glad we're bringing a, a little bit, a small amount, a teeny bit of information about MS that may help people with multiple sclerosis. At least we are starting to do that. Well, maybe we aren't doing a lot, but I hope it is helping some. For real. So what are we talking about today? Yeah, Kevin, what are we looking at today? Well, one of the many problems facing people living with MS is seizures. Seizures, which are the result of abnormal electrical discharges in an injured or scarred area of the brain. Their, you know, their incidences have been estimated at 2 to 5%, you know, as compared to the estimated 3% incidence of seizures in, you know, just the general population. The reason seizures are more common in people with MS is, is not completely understood. Seizures are classified into two forms, generalized and focal. Now, we have talked about the small spasms that you may get in your muscles, and that's kind of the focal seizures, believe it or not. But the seizures we're talking about today are... Is this kind of like epilepsy? Well, yeah, it, it is. So, let's get, get started. Hey y'all, welcome back to MS Plane Talk. I'm Kevin. I'm Fred. Kevin, can we go to the beach? I, I, I hope we can. Wait a second, a vacation? Oh man, we need it. Oh, I'm Cassie. Let's just not get ahead of ourselves. Let's, I gotta see how much money and all that other fun stuff that is involved in going on vacation to the beach, okay? Okay. So, so Fred. Yeah, Cassie? Why do bees have sticky hair? I don't know. Why? Because they use honey combs. Ugh. And I, I, I mean that. Just, ugh, ugh. That, that's just, oh, good Lord, that was terrible. Now, it may not surprise you that having MS puts you at a slightly higher risk of seizures and epilepsy. In fact, an estimated 2 to 5% of people living with MS have epilepsy compared with 
1.2% of the general population. Now, epilepsy is thought to be about three times more common in MS. A seizure is caused by inappropriate or excessive electrical activity in the brain, usually in the cerebral cortex. Epilepsy is defined as recurring seizures caused by this sort of abnormal brain activity. While scientists don't understand exactly why there's a higher risk of epilepsy when you have MS, it may be due to a complex interplay between the role of inflammation in both conditions and brain damage from MS lesions, which could lead to electrical disruptions. More research needs to be done to understand this connection. Research shows that seizures, if they occur, most often begin sometime after the onset of MS. Some studies have also found a link between the severity of MS and the risk of epilepsy, meaning that the more severe the case of MS, the more common seizures seem to be. Television and movie depictions of seizures often paint an incomplete picture of how they can be experienced. Seizures can vary significantly in their symptoms and severity. Some are transient and nearly imperceptible, while others can be far more severe and unnerving. Seizure symptoms depend on the type of seizure you're having, but in general, could include loss of consciousness or awareness, confusion, behavior changes, falls with no recalls or warning, strange sensations and emotions, uncontrollable jerking movements of arms and legs, staring, aura, it's important to note that many of the paroxysmal, sudden and brief, symptoms of MS, including spasticity, sensory distortions, and unexplained slurring, can mimic a seizure. A generalized seizure involves your whole brain. There are six types of generalized seizures, but tonic-clonic seizures are the most common type of seizures in MS. Tonic-clonic seizures are characterized by the loss of consciousness and muscular rigidity, the tonic phase, accompanied by convulsions, the clonic phase. Referred to in the past as grand mal seizures, they generally last for one to three minutes. While they're distressing to witness, most people who experience a tonic-clonic seizure don't actually feel them. Afterward, the person will typically feel exhausted, washed out, and disoriented. Head and bodily injury can sometimes occur if the person collapses when the seizure begins. Seizures in people with MS tend to be mild and cause no permanent damage. In most cases, anticonvulsant medications are needed to control or entirely eliminate the seizures. There are a variety of medications available to treat epilepsy, each with varying potential benefits and risks. In fact, some of these anticonvulsants are also used to treat MS symptoms like pain and tremors such as Tegretol, Carbitrol, Carbamazepine, Neurontin, Gabapentin, Depakote, Depakine, Valproic Acid, Topamax, Topiramate. If you are experiencing any seizure-like symptoms, such as, you know, the muscle spasms or twitches, weakness or tremors, it is important to speak with your doctor. Because they need to investigate it further. Check you out. So whether you're having seizures or proximal symptoms, your medical team can come up with a treatment plan that helps you get control of your symptoms and improves your quality of life. Yep. Talk to your doctor. Did you think we would make it through a video without saying, talk to your doctor? It is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Talking to your doctor about any and all problems you may be having, it is important to your well-being. And, well, your doctor needs to know to be able to help you. So, talk, talk to, to, your, to doctor. your doctor. Just speak up. Don't give up. Well, thank you for being here today on MS Plain Talk. I really hope you are getting a, a little bit out of these videos and that they are helping you. Anyway, I'm Kevin. I'm Cassie. And remember, if God sends you down a stony path, may he give you strong shoes. And I'm Fred. And well, 
Remember, life is like a cup of tea. It's all in how you make it. I hope y'all have a great week. And you know what? I hope to see you soon.